Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the King above all gods. Hallelujah. So let's ready our hearts today and give the best of our worship to our Lord.
the God of trials, Father. You never lead us nor forsake us, God.
Teaching me how to receive it. 
place, oh Father. We bless you, God. We honor you, God. In Jesus' name. Sunday. Amen. Uh, we also want to welcome all of our first time guests joining us today. So if I call your name, we just invite you to stand up so we can greet you. First, we have Rika invited by Mila. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. And next, I have Ali and Farida invited by Fernando. Hello, welcome. Thank you both and all of you for joining us today. Um, we will, uh, just so you know, we have cards either in front of you or beside you. Those are for you to take, read, keep them for yourselves. Um, also, if you are a first time guest or you have visited us in, uh, within this month, we invite you to join us after the celebration and visit our Connect Corner, located just outside the sanctuary, as we love to get to know you better. And today, after the celebration, there will be a baby, a baby dedication. This is an exciting time for the parents and us as a church to witness and participate in the commitment of raising a child in the love of the Lord. Amen. You are invited to stay after the celebration for this event, uh, but you're also free to go uh, into the fellowship hall at the end of the celebration. And enjoy a cup on us. We believe genuine relationships aren't only built in the sanctuary, but also over a cup of coffee or tea. So please make your way to the cafe and fellowship hall right after today's celebration so that we uh, can fellowship with you as it's a great opportunity to meet new people, catch up with friends, and really enjoy the joy of community. Amen. Next, I want, you, I want to encourage you to continue meeting with your life groups, whether in person or online. Let's interact with one another as we apply what we're learning and we grow in our spiritual walks together. For our kids, we have Champion Kids Church each Sunday after the worship. So if you have children, grandchildren, nieces, nephews, send them downstairs with our teachers where they can have fun with their friends and learn about Jesus and his love. And for youth, we have Zeal meetings each Friday at 7.30 p.m. You can follow their Instagram page at zealym for details and updates. We also want to invite you to join us each Wednesday evening from 7.30 to 8.30 p.m. for our Hour of Power. So just come before the Lord, pray with us, cast your cares on him, and be encouraged by the testimonies of what the Lord is doing in and through his church. Amen. And let's get excited for Sports Fest. This is happening Saturday, August 26th. Join us as we gather with CLC's other satellites for a full day of sports and, of course, lots of fun and fellowship. 
you can contact Cholo Manicus for more details. And lastly, follow us on all of our social media pages as this is the easiest way to stay up to date with all that is happening within your CLC community. And right now is offering time. We want to thank you for obeying God's principles to give and for supporting our ministry as we continue to share the good news of the gospel. And here are the ways that you can give. You can text to give, give through the website, the mobile app, or e-transfer your giving. For more instructions, you can visit our website at www.championlife.ca. Just make sure that you select the location of the uh, center you're giving to. Again, thank you for your continued support of our ministry. Let's pray for the offering. Lord, Heavenly Father, God, you are almighty God. Lord, you reign above the heavens and the earth. God, all things are for you and from you. God, we just thank you for how you have so richly blessed us in our lives. Thank you for the air in our lungs, the jobs that we have, God. Lord, we just take this time to give back just a portion of all that you've blessed us with, God. We just uh, dedicate it to you, Lord. Use it for the furtherance of your kingdom, God, that the lost may be found, that the brokenhearted may be healed, Lord. God, I thank you that we can participate in this way, in your kingdom, in the furtherance, God, of, your, of the glory of your name, God. Lord, just multiply uh, the finances for your purposes, Lord. We just submit all these things to you. Lord, open our ears and soften our hearts as we hear from you today. Lord, we love you and pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, before we dismiss today, um, we now have Tony here who, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to let her just share a, a testimony. Come on, Tony. Tony just went through lead school. As you know, lead school is one month of intensive training full time. I mean, she had to give up so many things and to, to make some sacrifice to be there. She's going to share your testimony. And by the way, uh, for those of you who don't know lead school, they had to have 33 topics that they had to learn in one month, all right? That is seven hours a day, four days a week. That's about 112 uh, hours uh, for a whole month learning, uh, including practical sessions and, and study of the Word of God and all of that. And so um, here's Tony, be able to share with you her experience in lead school. Let's go. Give him a hand. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, I just want to keep it short and share um, how the Lord has been, has really worked in my heart and in my life ever since, you know, the start of this month. It's crazy how many, how much change can happen in a span of four weeks. I went into lead school not expecting anything because I was so scared and nervous. Um, my leader would know, I would call her and say, I don't want to go because I'm so nervous. I don't know what to expect. But at the back of my head, I was like, I already paid for it. I might as well go. So, yeah, I went in the room, and there was eventually seven of us on the table. And the first class really was a good, great kickstarter to reveal the rest of the month. The first class is basically about God before anything else in our lives. He is a father, right? And whatever we get from being a son, his son, is what will overflow in our ministries. And that is really what I needed to hear um, that needed to be illuminated, that opened the heart to the rest of the sessions until the end. And before I knew it, July 3 became July 30. And I am going to miss Brampton, going to miss my classmates, but I'm so excited to be here knowing what I now know in the Lord. You can just imagine all the truth that has been revealed to the seven of us in that span of time. We have been trained, stretched, and developed. Every day would be a surprise for us because someone's going to preach randomly. Someone's going to lead worship. Someone's going to pray. And you'll never know who it is until like 15 minutes before. So we have to be prepared, right? And um, yeah, that was one of the biggest stretches. Um, but as the weeks go by. Personally, I learned to bring order to my life. I learned um, to wake up every day and, you know, fix my bed, 
I don't want to keep saying this because <laughs> I learned to wash the plates some more. <laughs> and I would later on learn so many things about my classmates. And these things are, um, I'm going to miss them. And these things just really built up our friendships that I will treasure for the rest of my life. Um, but one test testimony that I want to say is that God is really working in each of our lives. And for me, personally, through lead school, I was able to establish a deeper relationship with my family. Before, I had a mindset that uh, was so focused on bearing service uh, giving service to the Lord, right? And I paid so little attention to building authentic relationships around me, especially my family. And God just really like beautifully opened my eyes to the truth that if I want to be successful and if I want to be used by him, then I have to start building that relationship with everyone around me, especially my family, because God is all about love. Amen. Amen. Now, um, like, I'm able to say, I love you, mom, dad, mom. Oh, they're not here. <laughs> but I love you. <laughs> and that barrier that I was so caught up on breaking with my own strength, the Holy Spirit was able to break with a whisper and with a little push from Mama Iki. <laughs> and lead school has taught us that everything is rooted in love, that everything has to come from a place of selfish and authentic love, and that will only come from knowing the Father. I also learned that, TJ, permission to share one of the lessons. Um, it's called Sowing of the Sons. There was a third seed that was planted, and it did bear fruit, but after the worries of life, it was just, it got choked, and it was unfruitful. And I asked PJ, at the end of the class, I raised my hand, and I said, PJ, I don't know what my question is, but I hope you'll get it. And then I explained to him, I said, like, it took me, like, three minutes to keep saying, like, a lot of words. And he was like, I get your question. <laughs> it's basically, how do I manage my expectation on what God will do? And he gave me an example in the Bible the story of Martha and Mary and Lazarus. They were begging God to raise Lazarus from the, I uh, know, they were begging God to heal Lazarus. They're like, God, Jesus, just, can you heal him, please? And Jesus is like, no, I'm going to stay here. <laughs> and then Martha and Mary, as humans, as they were, they're like, what? And then eventually, you know, later on, Lazarus would die, right? But the moral of the story is, Jesus, his goal wasn't to heal Lazarus, but to resurrect him. And so at the end of the day, it's because God will do whatever his will is and not what we expect him to do. And that opened my eyes because I love the Lord, but sometimes I get so caught up with bearing fruit that I so much focus on myself and remove the focus on the Lord. And so it's the Lord's job to really redirect that and realign us to his word. And I am so grateful to lead school, that I get to discover that truth. And I know that um, you guys are happy for me, and I am so grateful that you are happy for me. But I just want you all, like, want us all to, like, take a moment and, like, just really be thoughtful of the fact that God sent me here to testify, not because, like, he's, not just because he's changed me, but to testify that he is still working. He is still raising a generation that will stand in his word, that will stand in his truth. And I am only a vessel of that. I, like, I am not going to be the last lead school student. Next year, there, God willing, there will be more who will be raised to stand in his word and really push Scarborough to stand in faith with the Lord. So I really thank the Lord for that opportunity. Thank you, um, honey, for trusting me, for getting married. <laughs> thank you, CLC Scarborough, 
for giving me the opportunity to catch the heart of the Father. And thank you. I know I've already thanked you guys. Thank you, Mama E. Thank you, PJ, for your heart for the next generation and for the next, and for that, the, the next, no, no, God knows how long. And to the leaders, like, I know, like, wow, I'm a leader now, right? But um, it is just my prayer that, like, not just for myself, but for everyone who's gone through elite school, for everyone who's known the truth about the word of the Lord, about his heart, it is my prayer that after knowing the truth and after being so, like, in the presence of the Lord, after knowing what your calling, your purpose is, it is my prayer that we don't drift away and we don't turn a blind eye to the calling of the Lord. Because um, he needs a generation that will harvest, right? He needs us and not just me. So I just really praise the Lord. And um, now is only the beginning. And um, I pray um, for another generation to be built up as true sons that will reflect and represent the kingdom wherever. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, uh, that's a challenge that, um, that she has given to us. So let's continue to build more leaders. The church can only grow as many as the leaders are capable of handling people. So that's why we need to raise up more leaders, but not just ordinary leaders, but leaders who are aligned to the kingdom of God. And that's what Lead School is all about. All right, so uh, I encourage you, uh, attend the Lead School next time, those of you that uh, were not able to attend this year. So we're going to dismiss, and I invite you, especially if you're a guest with us, uh, you're going to uh, have fellowship outside, right? There's, uh, there's some more uh, fellowship there. We have coffee, everything, snacks. All right, so we're going to have fellowship together. All right, so let's all stand as we dismiss with the blessing of God. Now just stretch your hands to heaven. With, and receive the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine his face upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you his peace. May he cause you to walk under an open heaven. May he cause you to prosper in every area of your life, even as your soul prospers. May he open doors of opportunities for you that you can enter in and be victorious for God. May he continue to fill you with his love, grace, and the power of his spirit throughout this week and until he comes. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a great week.